Did you guys hear that the price of eggs are really high or something? Or is there some kind of like egg shortage? You know what I always wonder? How inflation has affected being a crackhead? Did all the chemicals to make those kinds of drugs like go up in price? Which caused like the price of crack to like go up in value? And crackheads are like, you know what? I can't afford this lifestyle anymore. I'm just gonna get a job. <laughs> Oh my god, this bike is so filthy. I'm gonna give it a wash after this ride. Look at all that gunk, man. <laughs> you know what they say in Washington, if you don't ride in the rain, you don't ride in the rain. Welcome back to another episode of Riding and Talking. I'm your host, Budget Salt Poppy. What is going on, fam? Today we're gonna talk about why the Aprilia RSV4 is the most unreliable superbike there ever was made, there ever was done. There ever was! Let's go! Welcome back to Crackhead. <laughs> Gee whiz, let's let this truck go, bro. So in 2010, the Aprilia RSV4 came out. It was one of the coolest motorcycles to ever come out because it had a V4. Besides the Desmo Sedici RR, the RSV4 was pretty much the only superbike with a V4. And it was affordable, extremely affordable. It sounded gnarly as f I'm gonna backtrack a little bit because 2009 was actually when the RSV4 was released. But 2010 is significant. 2010, Max Biaggi won the World Superbike on the Aprilia RSV4. First Italian rider on an Italian superbike wins the world championship on a first gen superbike. Pretty crazy. And in 2010 was the same year Aprilia issued a massive recall of the RSV4. They had to put in brand new engines for all the RSV4s that were recalled. The Conrads failed. That's a pretty major part of the engine. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but the RSV4 hasn't had a major recall like that since. In 2012, we added APRC, which is like the electronics package for the Aprilia. And I mentioned this previously, that the Aprilia had the IMU before the R1 did. They just happened to call it APRC, not the 6-axis IMU. Now, I'm not sure if it was a 6-axis IMU that they use in the APRC, but Yamaha claims that they're the first company to integrate things like ABS, traction control, wheelie control, launch control, ball sack control. They said that all the other manufacturers were doing it independently. But if you look at the 2012 APRC, that's not true. The APRC is an integrated system. None of it was independent. Now, let's talk about recalls. The 2020 BMW S1000 RR had a ton of recalls. I owned one. I owned the 2020 M package. And I've made a few videos of it in the past where I take it to pretty much get every single recall done i had to get a new head on that bike does that make it an unreliable motorcycle 2015 r1 the crankshaft would move side to side and it caused a massive engine failure i used to have a 2015 r1 and a 2015 r1m i sold the 2015 r1m to a dude in north carolina that motor blew i think within a thousand miles of him owning it and a lot of other 15 r1 owners had this issue with the crank moving side to side in 2016, Yamaha's remedy was to hollow out one of the case covers. So that way when the crank moved side to side, it would have room. Did they issue a recall for it? No. Does that make the 2015 R1 unreliable? Yes! Yes, in my opinion, yes, it does. The fact that the crankshaft was long and it moved side to side and it caused massive engine failure in a lot of motorcycles, I'd consider the 2015 R1 unreliable. The 2008 CBR 1000 RR, that bike is known to consume oil. No oil equals blown motor. Everybody knows this in the Honda community, everybody. And it's funny because those are the same people in that community that will go out of their way to say that the RSV4 is unreliable. All because the first gen, the first iteration of the RSV4 had bad conrods. But if you listen to what I just said, a lot of first gen motorcycles have issues. This is not uncommon. Let's talk about the Jigster for a second. I think everybody's come to an agreement that the Jigster has been unchanged for a long time. Suzuki itself has won a ton of endurance championships. That's what they're known for is endurance. The Suzuki GSX-R is probably one of the most reliable motorcycles in the world. Yo! See, that's why I want the Supermoto, man. I just want to do wheelie stares at people, bro. Just like wheelie and stare you down. Maybe flip you off. Now let's compare the Suzuki GSX-R to the Aprilia. The R1 was redesigned in 2009, cross-plane crank, and then it was redesigned again in 2015 because the 2009 R1 was too freaking heavy. Let's look at BMW. 
another redesign in 2020 after the first one was a hit in 2009 but even the original bmw has design characteristics and some would argue that bmw stole the gsxr motor the german jigsaw man the german jigsaw that's what the bmw is let's look at ducati's l-twin Okay, a lot of people say that that bike is unreliable, but in the Panigale, when they finally got it right, L-Twin in the 1199 and the 1299, super reliable. Kawasaki's motor has been unchanged for a while. There's many reasons why Ducati ditched the L-Twin for the V4, and I'm not going to go over that. What I'm trying to tell you is the RS V4 has almost two decades of development. This same 65 degree V4 is the same 65 degree V4 that was in the original RS V4. You can't tell me that with that many years of development that the RSV4 is unreliable. Not a chance in hell. They have improved so many things inside this motor over the span of almost two decades. That if you just flat out call the RSV4 unreliable, you're a freaking idiot, dude. That's like saying that the 2015 R1M's failure at the crank makes the R1 unreliable. None of you R1 fanboys would ever dare to call the R1 unreliable. Why? Because it's Japanese. The same ding-dongs that are cock-stuck in Japanese bikes are the same ding-dongs that are saying Italian bikes like the RSV4 are unreliable. Idiots, man. I don't even know why I'm complaining, though. People are going to buy the bikes they want. I'm only talking from experience. I've owned every single super bike at least one iteration from every manufacturer except ktm the rc8 i've never owned and i've never owned an mv augusta i think the mv augustas are freaking ugly if you like the mv augustas good for you i don't give a shit <laughs> but if you ask anybody that's ever owned an rsv4 most of them will tell you it's been great i've had you know thousands of miles on mine you can jump on the forums and read about people who actually own these bikes for years and they'll tell you the rsv4 is probably one of the most reliable platforms when it comes to super bikes in general look at this oh we're back we're back we made it to the view welcome guys welcome thumbnail thumbnail <laughs> all right here's the appreciation post right in front of lemay car museum pretty iconic museum in tacoma check it out bro Woo. Look at it. It's dirty. It's dirty, <laughs> but dang, dude. This thing is a beauty. So part of the reason that this bike has a bad reputation for being unreliable is because of people who have never owned one. They just regurgitate the shit that they read on the internet or the crap that their buddy who rides a Jigsaw and he has an Icon vest and an Icon helmet just says, yeah, man, Italian bikes, especially Aprilia's, are unreliable. And it's kind of like politics, you know what I'm saying? You believe their bullshit long enough, you start to believe it too. Too. and then you regurgitate that and then you tell your buddies and then all of a sudden Aprilia is the worst manufacturer in the world but yo look at this look at this bike man they wouldn't make this same exact bike from 2009 into the 2020s 21 22 23 that thing talks back to you <laughs> You know which bike I think is unreliable though? None. <laughs> I think in some way all motorcycles have their quirks. Do I think that makes some motorcycles unreliable? Maybe. But honestly, I think it's more of the owners that are unreliable. They don't take care of their bikes. They don't do oil changes. They don't change their freaking chains. They don't clean them. They don't check valve clearances. Shit, I don't even think they know how to turn a wrench. A lot of these motorcycle owners rely on de dealership network. They rely on other people to fix their motorcycles. And I don't know, man. I don't trust anybody to work on my bike unless like there's like some major recall. Then it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go and, and get my upgraded calipers from BMW. Woo, I got some news for you guys, though. I'll share it with you at the end of this video. <laughs> God, I love this bike, man. Reliable, unreliable. I don't know if I even keep motorcycles long enough for me to notice. I think every couple of years I get a new bike. That's kind of, that's been the pattern. And I think that's just my natural curiosity to want to try everything. 
I want to give everything a chance. I don't really care like what people say if it's like unreliable, reliable, or whatnot. A lot of things I can fix myself, or most of the time I'm still within the warranty. So it is what it is. I got some news. I might be able to get my hands on an RS660 and do some long-term reviews of that bike. That's something that I've always wanted to try. When I got this bike, I was actually in there to try to get an RS660. It was like almost an option, but after taxes and all that good dealer fee stuff, it wasn't going to be much more to get the factory RSZ4 from 2020. The 2021 was also a consideration. I don't know, I'm still not like a fan of like the new styling. I really love the iconic RSV4 look with the three headlights in the front. And the new one still kind of looks like that, but that facelift, it's, it's in two different bikes now. It's in the RS660 and it's also in the new RSV4. And part of the reason I don't have the Pondy Gali anymore is because I got tired of seeing that bike everywhere. Ooh, Focus RS. Look at that thing. Right now, I haven't seen a lot of RSV4s in this area. My buddy Carl owns one. Oh, okay. Let's just, let's just cut right in front of me. <laughs> like I don't exist. My buddy Carl owns one. He, he actually never rides it, so... <laughs> That's the only other person I know in the area that owns an RSV4. But honestly, you don't gotta listen to me. If you don't wanna get the RSV4 because you think it's unreliable, that's fine. Get whatever the hell you want. But for those of you who are considering an RSV4 and you're hearing things about reliability, issues trying to find a dealer, maintenance requirements, all the negative stuff, I will tell you that if you don't live near a dealership, and you need dealership support, it may be a better idea for you to go buy a bike that has the dealership support you're looking for. Downshift bras, downshift. I love using auto blip. Auto blip's not necessary for the street. It's okay, it's still really fun to use. <laughs> All right, I'm done talking.